my name is um, Dr. Patrick Tracy, um, MD of Aylesbury Clinics, and the lecture I'm going to talk about is complications of dermal fillers, both their um, diagnosis and management. You know, um, this is a topic that's of um, increasing importance because we're seeing complications go up. We're not sure necessarily whether it's because more people are coming into the marketplace or possibly it's the introduction of lignocaine into a lot of fillers causing the vessels to vasodilate and as a consequence the rate of embolism um, possibly is increasing, we consider. Thankfully most um, problems are very minor and um, we know that soft tissue augmentation by dermal fillers is increasing almost in an exponential fashion. And this is from the American Academy of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons. And we see each year that um, the amount of dermal fillers been used are more and more. Most people have realized that the best fillers to use are the ones that are approved by the FDA. Unfortunately, in Europe and probably in Russia also, um, we had a situation where all our patients were being used as guinea pigs. And at one stage, in Britain and Ireland, we had as many as 168 different fillers on the market, when America only had four. Um, thankfully, as we reach um, 15 years into fillers now, we have a situation where most of the fillers that we use are safe, reliable, and mostly reversible. I'll quickly run through this, because we only have 15 minutes, but I'm going to come back to this. If you have an accidental interarterial injection, the sort of things that will happen will be you'll get blanching, you'll get this libido pattern, blue-black discoloration, blister or bulla, and then unfortunately skin necrosis. And I'll show you some examples, and some of them have happened very recently. As I said, most of the problems are very simple. Um, this is just a localized swelling, a little bit of steroids, dexamethasone. This is gone in two or three days. This happened to me, believe it or not, in 2001. This is one of my own photographs. And this girl was going to get married within four days. And she was fine. Um, and believe it or not, that happened with Restylane. And it's never happened to me since. But um, this is what happens. This patient here, you're going to get bruising. And bruising, I suppose, you can minimize it yourself by telling the patient not to take things like omega fish oils, vitamin E in any one of its forms, be it um, cod liver oil, be it um, the omega fish oils, um, any of the things that sort of people like in terms of um, the oils tend to sort of contain um, vit vitamin E in some of its forms. The rest of the vitamins are okay. This is a problem from Sculptura, and unfortunately this patient, um, and I don't want to sort of recognize per se, um, had a very uh, severe reaction with granuloma formation. Um, we, we think the doctor made up the solution at the wrong strength, and this was the time they were using three mils instead of 10 mils to make up Sculptra. Most of the problems happen as a consequence either of the doctor himself, either he injects too deep, in the wrong location. The product, and by God, over the last couple of years, we had some terrible products. Inflammation, as you know, you can set up giant cell um, or um, granulomas. Infection, biofilm is happening more and more, and I'll show you some examples of that. And then um, vascular problems. And vascular problems are the ones that you want to watch out for. The hyaluronic acids, in general, tend to be safe. But we know recently they're adding BDDD, and as a consequence of that, uh, these plasticizers tend to uh, give us products, I suppose, that you can use in different areas of the face. And that in itself is good, but sometimes, and I'm not just isolating this company, every one of the companies now have their own, um, uh, I suppose, hyaluronics with different cross-link patterns, with different amount of BDDEs, and as a consequence, the wrong product in the wrong place certainly can cause a lot of problems. This is a paper that I wrote recently on a product which has been pulled off the market, BioAlchemid, 
Fire Forum. I was speaking in Russia about two years ago and I had to see um, some patients there that um, had a lot of these problems and some of the pictures are from there. And this is a paper that I wrote on it. Bio in Blue was one of the polyalkamides, the same as bioalkamide. And um, this is the sort of problems that it caused. This is a product also that came, I think, from Russia. I'm sorry, I don't seem to be blaming Russia, Elena. But Riofil, it was used, and it caused horrendous um, infection-type problems later on, as did bioalkamide. I seen a patient only last Sunday um, that had bioalkamide injected in their face many years ago. Ten years later, it caused a problem, and I'll show you that. Radius, as you know, should never be injected into a lip, and you're going to get product migration. This is a famous case of somebody put radius into this singer's lip, and um, it had to be taken out. Bioalchemid. This, if you ever get it, um, I'll spin through this. This is the way it comes out of the face. Um, it looks pretty horrendous. Arterial necrosis. This can happen quite easily. As you know, the um, labial artery runs on the posterior margin of the wet dry superficially. And if you hit that, that's what you're going to get. So you need to be well aware of that. Again, this is a patient of my own. I was doing a paper for Prime magazine on atrophic scarring. Sorry, I redid that one in Prime. This is back in 2006. And the patient, I have had his photographs there quite innocently, had some um, of his um, acne scars, atrophic scars injected with radius, and it hit one of the vessels. And you can see the progression over a period of days. And this patient recovered fully. This is a patient that was referred to me in Dublin with radius injected. Now be careful if you're going into an area near the ailer artery. If you're using hyaluronic acid fillers, you can reverse it. Now I'll show you how to reverse it. And within 24 hours, most of these can be fully reversed. If you're using something like radius, and I'm not against radius, it's a wonderful product in its right place. You're on a highway probably to nowhere in terms of trying to salvage your patient. This is a patient I've seen. I've got a lot of patients referred to me from London with almost cartoon-esque figures. When we MRI their face, you can see the substantial amount of encapsulization from the high uh, cross-linked hyaluronic acid fillers. That was Voluma from um, Juvederm, Sub-Q. Um, I don't want to mention the companies. And you can see on the bottom picture where I started on one side and reversed it totally, and then I start on the other side. And I was using dexamethasone, high LAs, and he got a little bit of 5 fluorouracil but he sort of had a reaction to that. Biofilm starts like this. You get an initial attachment, you get maturation of the phase, and then it will disperse. So you can inject in one place, the patient gets an infection, and then everywhere in the face where the patient has had the fillers, biofilm will start off. This is a patient that I've seen just since Christmas. She was actually sent to me from one of the hospitals. She was admitted there with uh, bad gastroenteritis. Um, a nurse had injected her face with um, different hyaluronic acid products, and she blew up like this. Thankfully, as of last week, these are pictures, and um, I don't want to identify the patient, obviously, and we reversed her with dexamethasone and hyalase. This is the important part of the lecture. You've got to know your facial anatomy, and particularly in terms of the vascular structures. Um, even if you were just to know the branching patterns, inferior labial artery, superior labial artery, inferior ailer, particularly the ailer is the one that you're going to hit, the lateral nasal. And I was just sent some pictures of somebody who hit the lateral nasal only a few weeks ago as well. Because I was lecturing a lot in South America, I'm getting a lot of pictures in from there. Again, I don't want to identify patients, but I'll show you just in the last couple of weeks. Remember this. This is an important one. You're going to have two different types of, of emboli, small filler bolus and large filler bolus. Small filler bolus, if you look at it, is usually carried downstream by the blood flow. It'll cause limited obstruction, but it can be bypassed by abundant vessels. That's the sort of thing that happens there. That's glabellar artery embolization. So what happens is you get restricted collaterals, as you probably know, particularly in the glabellar region. And the effect, I suppose, depends on the amount of collateral 
um, vessels you have to solve the problem. If you don't have enough, you're going to get this and skin necrosis. Large filler bolus is different. Now, this is the one you really, really got to be careful of. When it happens, it happens by hitting a small or a medium-sized vessel. Now, watch it. One of my end organs there is the eyeball, okay? And I know of three doctors that have caused blindness, unilateral in patients, just by injecting Sculptra in one instance and radius in another into the sort of temporal region. So what happens there is when the material enters a smaller medium vessel, it flows retrograde to the body's normal blood flow. And as a consequence, it'll enter a distal segment because it has nowhere else to go. And it'll follow the path particularly if you've got anomalous anatomical architecture. 10% of people have unusual, I suppose, facial artery architecture going to the ribal. So you can inject here, and the patient will go blind. This is what happens with arterial embolus, and this is hyaluronic acid caught within an artery. If you get that, don't be afraid to inject hyalase. Inject, inject, inject. Everybody says to only use 30 or 50 units. I don't agree. Put in 300 to 500 units. You're going to cause no problem. You're trying to save a patient's face. You're going to try and save their sort of sight. Now, the thing is, we know now by a recent picture, by uh, or a recent paper by Claudio De Lorenzo in, in, in Toronto, that even if you inject around the artery, it will go through it, and you will free your embolus. You don't have to inject it back into the artery. Any of the sort of perivascular thing, if you just inject, 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 75 units a time, you will free that up. This is um, a patient who got through to me from California. She's a nurse that was injected, and she was kind enough to lend her her slides. And you can see that over a period of time, that sort of the pictures got worse. Again, this is a nasal problem. I'll go into a worse one in a moment. Um, this is a patient that recently was seen in um, a South American country. I don't want to identify the patient or the doctor. And we have pictures all the way through. You can see the problem starting. Ailer nasal artery has been sort of hit. As a consequence, over a period, the, you get destruction of the nose. The patient was brought through and she got a skin graft. If you get it, and you see it launching in front of you, and the first sign of embolism is pain. Obviously, the first thing to do is discontinue your injection. Now, Prime Magazine, quite kindly, have put all my lectures into a special supplement, and you'll probably get it at the stand, plus the reversal procedures will be there. Massage the area, so you try and sort of make the embolism as small as possible. Apply warm packs, go to your microwave, get some towels, put it on the area. Get some nitro paste that we use in cardiology. We know that's a vasodilator. Be careful of nitro paste. Some people can be sensitive to it. You can cause a syncopal episode if um, you use it too much. Everybody who injects hyaluronic acid should have hyalase in their fridge, and I cannot say that enough. Everybody carries adrenaline, but you should have hyalase, particularly if you're doing remote clinics. Take 300 units off it. Everybody makes it up their own way. Whenever you get it, there's 1,500 units in it. I normally mix that with bacteriostatic saline that you use for Botox. Put a mill of that in. Draw up not 0.2. It's very painful. It's very sore. Be careful. It can cause anaphylaxis, but very, very rarely. So draw up not 0.2. Mix with not 0.3 of 2% lignocaine without adrenaline. Don't watch. You don't put adrenaline into it because as a consequence, you're going to make things worse and inject the area with little shots of 75 a time. As I say, nitroglycerin ointment, watch it. Some people can be allergic to it, but um, most people will be okay. Hyalase, that's gonna be your best friend. Um, again, in the special supplement, uh, and I know that time's running low here, the protocol is there. So I can give it to you later. This is a case that recently was sent to me within 24 hours. She was a nurse in Dublin, and I was in the west of Ireland, and I got one of my hair transplant surgeons remotely to inject her with hyalase. Uh, we went through the whole protocol, and um, believe it or not, she had a sort of syncopal episode, and as a consequence, had to be transferred to the emergency room. But thankfully, the plastic surgeon in the emergency room knew me, 
I had enough time, I suppose, to cross Ireland, which was three hours. They gave her back to me, and um, under treatment, she was totally clear within five days. So if you can get these patients within the golden hour and apply higher layers liberally, but when I say liberally, probably it doses 10 times what it says in the literature, but obviously, you know, sort of don't um, go mad. Your end result is obviously saving the patient's face and their structures. Um, I go slightly different than other people because you can see I put the patients on steroids as well. I'm not totally convinced, even though a lot of plastic surgeons would stand against me on this, that the total problem you get if the patient arrives the next day is direct intra-arterial embolism. Any plastic surgeon will tell you if you put your finger on the facial artery, it'll still pulse down the line distal to that. And that's probably true. But if you had embolized an artery, you would expect blanching at the time of the incident. So if the patient's coming back one day later or 24 hours later, the possibility exists, I believe, because hyaluronic acid is hydrophilic, draws in a lot of water, that you're compressing the artery. And as a consequence, it, the embolism may not be within the arterial structure, but outside it. And as a consequence of that, that's why I say add in dexamethasone. I give the IV and I give it orally. It's going to do no harm, and it most probably makes logical sense to me, and maybe in another two or three years, other people would do this, is to add in dexamethasone at the time. And I firmly believe, believe it or not, that that patient, even though we'd give quite a lot of um, high lays, she deteriorated within the hospital, not for anything more, I think, that she needed some more steroids. And as soon as we give her some more steroids, her um, skin markers came back. And as I say, Prime Magazine have special supplements of my lectures. Thank you. Thank you.